are you done talking? Tell me, baby, are you done talking? Yeah. No, we are not done talking. This is Talk the Things, the ACWWS YouTube channel. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Expresses her creativity and seeks enlightenment through sculpture and drawings. She has won essay and art awards in the Bahamas. Internationally, she has won the David Howe Literary Prize in 2001 and the Canyon A. Broadhurst Prize in 2009 for short fiction and was overall winner of the Commonwealth Broadcasting Association Short Story Competition in 2001. Her first book of poetry, Curry Flavor, was published in 2001 in England by People Tree Press, which is a press that we share. And Lilawati is a practicing mechanical and building services engineer. She's president and co-owner with her husband of a consulting engineering firm in Nassau, Bahamas. Her poetry and short stories have appeared in many publications in the Caribbean, in the UK, in the US, and in Holland. Lilawati has participated in workshops directed by well-known writers, presented literary papers, and been a keynote speaker and on many occasions. She has given poetry performances or been a featured poet in many countries. Her poetry collection, Immortel and Bandara Poems, was a finalist for the International Proverse 2009 and was published by Proverse Hong Kong in March 2011. Please put your hands together to welcome Asha. Oh good, she likes my curry. Hey <laughs> <laughs> for the Jamaicans. It was a scent of roasted jira in my hair, pungency of onions tearing at my eyes, bite of ginger in my ear, the crush of black mustard seeds in my mouth, the tan of turmeric on my nipples, perfume of cardamom in my navel, bouquet of achar masala on my fingers, taste of coriander leaves trickling from my pores, flavor of garlic dripping from my lotus flower that took you back to Faisabad that made you cry in your coming for your mama's curry. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure some of you had that experience when you <laughs> ate. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was not quite sure how it would taste, but I, I think it, it was very good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So. Because we are in Miami, I will do as some of these, quite a few of these poems were written. Poems in here were written at the Caribbean Writing Summer Institute workshop where Haza and I met. So, anyway, this is one of them that was written at that workshop. Steel Pan in Miami. Last night I drove over Plain, Miami, far in the southwest to Miami Pan Symphony. Panyard not under open skies, not bounded by mountain peaks, Sierra de la Rico and El Tucuch, but swallowed in the stomach of a boxy warehouse. Steel pan music cornered muffled by dense concrete prefab walls. Not raging over Queen's Park Savannah, not jingling like running water in East Dry River. Saw the girl child beating six bass fans made in one afternoon 
not by Free Simon, the hammer man, but by Mike Conahan, Trini in Miami. Mm -hmm. Listen to the boy child, strum the cello pan, heard the man child, the woman child, or the chrome tenor pans carrying the calypso tune, not to Maracas Bay, with coconut fronds and six foot waves, but to Miami Beach, man-made fringe with sea oats and cocoa plums. And when the music died, a farewell so warm like Miami heat, a trilly voice bidding, dry safe eh? an incantation from the streets of Port of Spain, a familiar song so, so strange in this multilingual Caribbean city in the frying pan handle of North America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the one that cut him. <laughs> okay, so th this one, this one is called Love of the Culture. Nice. <laughs> it is such a bam, just so, and sometimes this culture is rough around your naked body or slinky and sexy, slow and dreamy. <laughs> Like it want to make love with you. At other times, it is making get making knees get weak, it's trembling all over, moaning and groaning like it's a shango Baptist catching power. <laughs> and then again, sometimes it is getting excited, eyes open wide and shining like black opal, heart pounding in your chest like tassa drums in a cooking night or Jose. But always, always at the dead of night in a silver rhythm where the baron of Port so rats, deep pan of sitar in its climax, bam, and just so it is go. <laughs> Bad hair night. My hair is bad in its own way. It wants to go on the bus. Never mind the knife, cutlass, and gun, or the fighting. It wants to experience a bus ride through Nassau on Christmas night, just before Boxing Day John Canoe start. It wants to mix up in OPB. That's other people's business. <laughs> Stick up here, push out there. I say M Y O D B. And you could guess who business that is. <laughs> Keep a low profile. But no, my hair bad. My hair wants to be referee. In fight, the ultimate is a Mike Tyson fight. My hair wants to part. No, like stand up in the middle, pushing apart Warren gangs. <laughs> and make proclamation about sides, about who on the wrong and who on the right. I say it's only one side I'm interested in, my own. <laughs> so I out of here with my bad bad here. Thank you. So it makes my question seem like such a moot one after reading that. Because my question was, do you still consider yourself a transgressive poet? <laughs> engineer and of course a writer so my question is but how do you embrace both
feels that might seem completely different, but are they really completely different? Thank you. This is a poem I've spent my, I mean, a, a, a question I've spent my life trying to answer. <laughs> but um, let's put it like this. Um, the, the writing, whether it's poetry or, or um, the, the fiction or even the art, is a way for me to um, like take readers away from the engineering, um, refocus, you know, get, get my mind into another space. So when I get back into my engineering, I, I can see with some, some fresh eyes, right? Generally, that, that can happen. Of course, there's, there are times when no matter what I do, it doesn't work. But generally, it can happen like that. Um, and of course, even, I mean, to, to do the writing, you know, most people would think it's um, easy, nice, you know, you keep getting away, but writing to me is hard work. <laughs> and uh, I mean, all, all of it, the, the, the uh, fiction, the, the poetry, the artwork, the, the, <clears throat> sorry, they're all hard work. And so I need to get away from, I use engineering, Believe it or not, to get away from the writing, <laughs> and as well, <laughs> I remember when we were at uh, one of the the, the Caribbean Writers Summer Institute in Miami one year. As soon as it was finished, like because that was a five-week program, which was long for me. Um, as soon as it was, it was finished, I went to the engineering department at the University of Miami. Right, so <laughs> just, just to see what they were doing. <laughs> so that that that's what happens with me. You. No, as you were talking um, about the engineering, um, you've been winning some prizes re recently, uh, but they're all formal poems. I'm wondering if there's any time between your vocation, both as, again, as poet and engineer, because the poems that you've been writing using just, just these poetic forms uh, have been quite stunning. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really affirming. But um, there is like a connection between the form poems and the engineering because um, the, doing a form poem is like uh, solving an equation. Right. And so um, I guess in, in a sense you could say that the, the two, the, the engineering scientific mathematical side is, and, and, the, and the poetry, they, they're becoming like, like closer together now. Yeah. When, um, but but <laughs> I found the side that, that um, I do these on, the, the, the form bonds. Mm -hmm. I found it at a time when I was really frustrated with my engineering. <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, you know, I, I wasn't getting the time to write, and somehow it showed up on my screen, you know, the, the, um, the site. Mm -hmm. It's a um, Writer's Digest um, yes. site, blog. And it showed up. And I said, so this was um, in April. Now in April, he does the uh, poem a day challenge, where you, he gives you a, a, um, a prompt every day, and you write a poem based on that prompt every day. So I said to myself, you know, I'm feeling really um, blocked, you know, writing this blog. I need to try this to see if it can work. And it was already in April, so, you know, it, 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 um, at least a week had gone. But I went into it, because it allows you to do that, to join, when, whenever you want to join. And I went into it, and I did it. I'm very proud of myself. I forced myself to do it. And so, um, that's one of the reasons I stay with the blog, is because, it helps me to force myself to write, 
which is something I think you know all of us who, who are writers we, we can understand that we need something like that. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I don't need the mic. I can just speak up. That's fine. Sorry. Oh, I think. Okay. Oh, this is Lily. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, just ask the question. Why you no, I think. No, oh, okay. Sorry. Um, thank you for your reading. Um, thank you. I noticed, like, as you were going through the poems, there's like such an intense level of musicality in every poem that you're writing, whether or not you're writing about like a musical subject or if it's just there in the verse. And I wondered how much of that musicality comes out naturally, like within a first draft, and how much of it is like craft-based or more comes in with the revision process. Thank you so much. First of all, I'm really happy you said that because I didn't know that there was all of this musicality. <laughs> but my mother's family, especially my uncles, all of them, um, musically gifted and I always felt really um, like sad that I didn't have that gift <laughs> so yeah so that 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 means a lot to me that you know you you see that coming out and so basically I don't I don't work at it because I don't feel as if I know enough about music to do that. So, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, any more questions? John, you look like you have a question. <laughs> you have a question? really like high how old were you when you wrote your first poem? How old was I when I wrote my first poem? When I was growing up, I didn't write poetry. I wrote stories, and um, you know, one of them I won a prize. This was in high school. I won a write a short story prize, but I didn't write poetry. Um, and then, of course, when I moved to the Bahamas before you were born. <laughs> um, and the, po the, the, the writing started to come out, it came out as poetry. So I, I was already in my 20s when this was happening, when, when the, the, the poetry was coming out. And I, I, never, I never knew, oh, I, I still don't know why it came out as poetry then. Um, I, I do the fiction. I, th I always thought that my first book was going to be a book of fiction. That hasn't happened yet. So, um, you know, just keep everything crossed for me. <laughs> that soon it'll happen. <laughs> and that all of you will buy. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I would have been, I would have been um, an, an older writer. But like I said, I was writing from when I was a child, um, the fiction. Yeah, so it's, it's always, obviously it's always been there as something that I, I, I did. Writing is just the form. Um, didn't come out. But I did study poetry in high school as well as, as the fiction and that's where I would have learned about Derek Walcott and Campbell Bradford and uh, people and I mean I have a poem in, in the new book to Campbell Bradford as well you know, because they've all, they've all inspired me in my writings. <laughs> Tia, you have a question? <laughs> Do you, have, no, do you have like a social media page? Or ask her. Ask her. Yeah. Do you have like a social media page or a website? I have a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have um, any other social media page as yet. Um, and the website I've been. You know, it's one of these things you say, oh, I, I, I should get, and then time goes on and it doesn't happen. So that's, that's the only reason. You know, I haven't been able to devote the time that I need for that to happen. That's all. But I do have a Facebook page. Lalawati Manu Raming. 
That's the name. Okay. <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's that's the proper thing. I'm giving it the proper that's, pronunciation. That's okay. <laughs> I think Jeffrey wanted to. Jeffrey has a question. Oh, how has how has Brathwaite been for the student? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like the mic was off. Is it back on? Is it on? It's on. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, he asked, how did Bradford influence me? Um, you see in, in, in the, um, if you ever get a chance, do we have time for me to read it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Okay. We started late, so <laughs> okay. that's our excuse, <laughs> running late. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found it. <laughs> it's called Email to Camel Bradford on his 70th birthday. Mm -hmm. So that was a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. Right, and it has an epigraph by Benjamin Zephaniah, and the, the epigraph goes like this. As an African, a plastic bullet hit me in Northern Ireland, but the children overstood and they grew strong. As an African, I was woman in a man's world, a man in a computer world, a fly on the wall of China, a Rastafarian diplomat, and a miner in Wales. I was a red hot Eskimo, a peace loving hippie. And the reason that Epigraph spoke to me is because I have read where um, Carol Bradford would talk about. Um, his, you know, using the computer, um, being, uh, and then of course his, his um, the way he, he changes the word and so overstood mm -hmm. in, in, in the epigraph is, mm -hmm. I think Beckman definitely was influenced by Bradford when he wrote this. So anyway, so my poem, I, I wrote it as an email to Cameron Bradford. Mm -hmm. To look at me, I am no African, though they tell me African Mother Eve's mitochondria still mark my genes. To look at me, I am not black diasporan, I'm brown, so they say, not a red hot Eskimo. Oily straight here could be a hippie. To look at me is to see Mahatma, though my gray haired temples are more Indira's. Her portrait adorned my childhood walls. To look at me is to see a jandy, white, yellow, red flags shredded by northeast trade winds and rains that flood Shagornas. To look at me is to see a coolie. My father was a laborer who cleared drains. At dawn, was busy drunk at dusk. To look at me, I was born Caribbean. 30 years in your future to overstand your words. Cut and paste my own. To look at me now, Indo Trini woman, poet scarring she way in an Afro man's world, wanting at least 70 years like you. Did that answer the question? Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank well, you. Are, if there are no other, are there, anyone else has a question? Yes. Yes. Okay. Last question. 
I just wanted to ask you um, more about a question about passion. I know that like as a poet, um, or just even as a, per a person who enjoys poetry, there's a, a particular poem that might really be stamped on your heart that like, you want to go back to, maybe your own or maybe the work of another, that maybe in hard times or in times where you think of um, yourself or the reason why you want to keep doing the work, that there's this particular poem that might come back to you. So I was curious for you what that poem was and why it sparks passion. Hmm. <laughs> um, I don't have like one poem I, I go back to, um, but I, I do try to, to read, you know, like sometimes I'm feeling like, you know, why am I doing this? <laughs> I may read someone else's work. You know, I, I find, I go and find other people's work. And I do get inspired by reading other people's work. And it doesn't have to be that, you know, like I read this um, epigraph from, from Benjamin Zephaniah and wrote the Camembert poem. It doesn't have to be quite like that. It could be that I'm reading something and another memory shows itself that takes me like in a completely different direction. So it doesn't have to be that I'm writing back to something. It could be that I'm jumping off um, at some point and that, and that it's going to take me in a completely different direction. But um, for my my um, poetry, I really, really love Love of the Culture. <laughs> I love reading it and, um, I mean, curry flavor is nice too, but Love of the Culture is about so many, so many parts of the culture that I, I was able to get in, in that one poem that it really um, lifts my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what does Tabanka mean in Trini Tabanka? Oh, right, you wanted that one read. I love that one. You want me to read that? <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> now I have to go to the contents for that one. Okay. <laughs> Tabanka means um, heart sickness. Okay. Mm. Heart sickness. Yeah, so um, it could be, I mean, typically it's um, like um, for people, right? So, um, lovers. Mm -hmm. And, okay. like, if you, they have another word, they choose. Anyway, like, you know, somebody leave you, a, a lover leaves, and then uh -huh. you, you, you have tabanka. But we also had, um, Kari Tabanka was a calypso yes. by the mighty Trini. Right. Right. You know, yes. you know that yes. calypso? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. so, um, it's kind of like, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's inspired by that, but it's, it's I'm thinking of Kari Tabanka when I'm, when I'm writing Trini Tabanka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so this was in Carnival 92. So we were in Trinidad for Carnival 92, and this poem is about leaving Trinidad after Carnival. So, Trini Tabanka. Home is where heart and a body wracked by pain, saying farewell to a mountain rain, chip into the tassa in the valid dawn of a jubilee morning. Willie Devil Day, Jab Jab in black oil, brown mud and wine girl, gyrating, molesting the Southtronics truck. Twelve year old with sleepless eyes, beat out the rhythm of a seasoned pan man on a silver oil drum. Her tender baby fingers rugged around rubbered pan sticks. That re roti, pelau, kalalu, olo, white magic. Bentley on a hot, breezy, pretty much Tuesday, 
form a line and wine and something. If you can't get a woman, take a man. <laughs> <laughs> feathers, sequins, feathers, sequins, tinsel, feathers, sequins, tinsel, oscillate, smooth, sparklers, sirens, rotate lasciviously across the savannah, enticing setting sun and mountain range to copulate in a last lap before Ash Wednesday, when we bathe in ashes and pretend we're sorry we didn't let Satan have all the fun. Mm -hmm. Now flying in the plain above the mountain, away from this land, pain had me crying in my heart for where home is. Questions? We can ask them just one more. Do you want to ask your last one? Yes. Go ahead, please. What would you tell, um, I guess this goes back to the question that I asked about um, your career as a writer, but also as a mechanical building services engineer. So what would you tell young writers that might feel that they need to choose between writing and a different career field. And obviously you have been successful at, at both of them. Thank so, <laughs> how, yeah, what, what, yeah, what would you tell them? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't believe in divisions within the brain. Um, and that goes to, you know, like, um, divisions with the, the so-called divisions within the brain that determines um, um, uh, what a, a man can do and, and what a woman can do, you know, one, woman's jobs and, 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 and men's jobs, and um, right brain, left brain. I, I, don't, I don't believe that they exist as, as, as um, things that, that cannot be changed because I think all you need is training. And to open the mind to do whatever it is you you need to be doing. So whether you want to be writing and, and um, you think you you are uh, I forget which one that is writing the left or the right, whichever one. And you think you think you're not that one. All you need to do is do the training, and there are training that includes things like. Um, Meditation, um, the when you do your diagrams, what they call them, your brainstorming. Uh, brainstorming, yeah, and then you 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 um, if you you, you use no, you use the brainstorming to create the diagrams of all these different things, Mind. and they do open up the mind to possibilities, and for me. That's all you need, whether you in a, in a frame of doing mathematics, if you just switch and decide to do some brainstorming, you can find yourself moving into poss other possibilities that, that you would not have been thinking about when you were just doing the mathematics. And similarly, if you are a writing type, humanities person, all you have to do is train your mind. I mean, and that's why um, mathematics as a, a subject from, from you, starting from when we are very young, is an important part of, um, the, I believe, such an important part of the, the um, education, because that's also a way to train the mind, to, to improve the logic thinking. And logic thinking helps us not just to solve an equation, it helps us to make decisions, general de life decisions. It helps us to do that because we are in the frame of working out, okay, this 
if I do this and then do that, then I get this and, and so on. So we can apply that kind of logic to decisions we have to make. And then we can also apply it to the writing. So I don't think <laughs> that the two are inseparable and, and, and that they will never meet. And I think it's very, it's very important that we do expose children to everything, the, the science and the technology and the humanities, and let them become the best people that they can become. All right. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you for coming out and gracing us with your presence and for your generosity. You've given us a lot of time and a lot to think about and a lot of beautiful poetry. Okay. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming out. I also want to thank our sponsors, the chair, Heather Russell of the English Department and the director of African and African Diaspora Studies, who sponsored this event as well as the library staff and the library here at BBC and Steve and April and all of my students will help to make this a wonderful event.